Hi there. What are the common commands that many of you might be using if you're working on the Linux terminal apart from ls and all these file related commands would obviously be the ps command. A very popular command for monitoring processes, right? So you say ps without any arguments, you can get list of processes that's running on your current shell session, uh, but you want to see the system wide uh, process listing, you'd always say ps ax. This is a very common switch that you use taken from the BSD style uh, switches or some of you come from the at and Unix environment might be using PS minus EA. They both are sort of identical. Linux provides way too many switches for PS to maintain compatibility with the BSD style environment and also to maintain compatibility with at and System 5 style environment. So it can be quite confusing to figure out all the switches in PS command. In this particular video, I'll talk about one particular option which I found very, very useful, which I thought I would share with you. PS command can be used to, uh, by default, when you run PS command, the fields printed here, the PID, the TTY, the time, the CMD, uh, sometimes you want to customize it. You want to say, I don't want all these fields. I want exactly the fields that I need. I want to find out percentage of CPU usage. I don't want to find out memory utilization. I want to find out parent process ID. So you will be at the mercy of some common switches that people would tell you like here. PSAX, which would print some set of fields. Here, this prints the PID, the terminal, the process status. You can see that PID, the terminal on which it runs, the process status code, status flags is basically, and uh, the CPU time utilization and the command. Or if you try using PS minus AUX, you may get something else. You normally get fields, which are the command, I think the username and the user who's running the command, the PID, the percentage CPU, percentage memory. So these are pretty much fixed formats. But what if I want to customize to my liking, maybe make it more script friendly. For example, I want to just find out, uh, uh, get the list of PIDs alone and nothing else. If you want to customize the columns to be printed, you can always remember this command PS minus E O. Minus E is indicate uh, all processes system wide. You don't want all process, you want to just look up process in your current shell session. You can simply use PS minus O. <clears throat> and this minus O switch can be used to select the output format. For example, I can just type PID. I can also print PPID. I can also print, let's say, RSS, which is nothing but the physical memory utilization of a process, also called as resident set size. So you can actually use this, or you can also use combinations like PID and args. Args will tell you the actual command line arguments used for running the program. So you can cherry pick exactly what columns you want. But this will do it for a session. If you want to do it system wide, you can actually use PS minus EO. Minus E indicates all processes and you can print it. I guess you can also use PS minus AO also. I guess it works. No, minus AO didn't work. I can just check that. Normally minus A and minus E are sort of similar. But certain places it's not really consistent so the documentation or the man page says minus a and minus e are identical minus a switch come from the bsd variant and minus e from the at and system 5 variant right so anyways you can just try to use ps minus eo and pid <clears throat> it prints the list of processes on the system in terms of the pid some interesting use cases i want to find out um, the total memory utilization of all the processes right so if you want to find out the physical RAM utilization, you can simply use PS minus EO RSS. It already tells you physical memory utilization. Some of these fields with where it shows zero, they may represent kernel threads. Kernel threads, physical memory utilization is not accounted. It only accounts to user space processes. So all user land process. When you do a PS command, normally when you see any command that comes up with a square bracket by default, they are very likely kernel threads threads running in the kernel mode. Linux kernel is heavily multi-threaded, heavily concurrent. There are lots of threads created in the kernel space for asynchronous operations. And these threads are listed also as processes in the PS listing. So yeah, they will, if you look up the memory utilization for them, they will all be accounted as zero, right? So never mind. we can just use PS minus EO RSS, which gives you a list. And as you know, you can always pipe it to XARGs. Something that's messy, you always get this column header. In Linux, you can always use PS minus minus no header if you don't want a header to be printed. But if you don't have this minus minus no header, you'll have to use commands like a CD. Another option is you could actually, if you don't want to use minus minus no header, you could use a, a CD 
and uh, you'll just say 1D, delete line number one, right? And then you pipe XRs, <clears throat> you get space updated data. And as usual, if you have space updated data like this, you can always convert it to, um, you know, Z substitute all spaces with space plus space globally. And you know the deal. You can just say pipe W and pipe WC, uh, sorry, BC. You get the total physical RAM utilization in bytes for the entire system, right? Uh, of course, you don't have to use the second uh, ACD option if you know about the switch. Minus minus no header that works on PS command, which is bundled with GNU core utils. So you can say minus minus no header. You can do wonders with this. You can generate PS commands output in all forms of automation. This is just an example. Uh, you could also use PS and I can say minus EO and uh, I can just specify user, name of the user and arms. Just let's see username and the programs run by different users. You can maybe send it to sort command by sort. The sort based on different users. Of course, the headers are there. You can see that user and command being printed. Sometimes this can this can get a little messy. Yeah, you can uh, disable these headers in your automation kind of workflow. You don't really need it. Sort it based on lexicographic order. Sometimes you just want to get to know as what all users processes are running, which what all user credentials processes are running. You could actually just use user pipe sort minus u. The processes on my system are running with all of these user credentials. And yes, when you see numbers like this, this is very likely not user accounts. It looks like these are running with UIDs for which there are no accounts set on my system. It looks like some kind of a bad configuration. That's what I can think of. Uh, if you look at this number over here, there's one followed by so many zeros. I'm sure there should be no user account for that. You can verify that by using, uh, um, you know, cat slash etc slash password. <coughs> I have user accounts for all of the users, dummy users I've created on my Ubuntu system, but you don't see user accounts like one followed by so many zeros. Looks like they're dropped credentials. We need to find out what process they are and maybe fix it. So we can pick them up. Maybe we can actually say comma args. Yeah, looks like system D is already system D network D system D. System D itself is running with a different user credentials and there's no user account created here. And I need to investigate what's the reason behind it. Yeah, it runs with a different user credentials for which no user accounts are created in ETC password. Maybe some, it's a security feature, but then uh, ideally they should create some kind of system accounts. There could be a reason why they've not done that. Anyways, that's fine. So uh, I just told you about how you can customize the output that you want. So what are columns that you can actually print? Man PS. When I say man PS, Look out for notes. The notes section is where you have wealth of information about how PS works, what all commands are supported, what all features are supported. And I'll look into it and talks about status codes and all these. And somewhere down, you can see the format specifiers, standard format specifiers. These are the ones you can use. Percentage of CPU utilization, percentage of memory utilization, the args which are used in here. You can also look at uh, all the different fields. Base command supports, right? It's a huge list that you see here. It's exhaustive. And all of these entries are fetched from slash prox slash PID slash status and slash prox slash PID slash stack. These are the files that PS command reads to get these details, right? So other things you can do is you want to find out which particular process is utilizing maximum CPU. You can actually say PS minus EO TCPU. Comma, and I can just say uh, args, right? I can also print the PID, PID comma args. I can now sort it. I can just say sort minus n, sort based on the number. Because I've taken the first field, it's going to sort it based on numerical order for the first value. And from this, if you just type, let's say, tail minus one, you can see that uh, I'm actually recording this entire session using OBS, and that seems to have the highest percentage of CPU utilization is 98.1%. We can even uh, extract, that, extract that particular field and you can also print the process ID 
and you can also print the process. You can exactly select what you want. Or you want to find out which particular process is take, is, is, uh, has accumulated a maximum memory, which process takes up most memory in terms of physical RAM. You could do the same thing. Instead of percentage CPU, you could actually use this. You want to find out about virtual memory utilization? Just use vSize. And all these columns I'm using, they're all listed under the notes section when you scroll down in the man page for PS command and you can look it up right there. The PS is a very powerful tool in Linux. It's just that it's got immense number of options. And I just covered, I just scratched the surface and showed you one of the features which could be useful in your automation workflow, right? So you can uh, use this for various automation. If you want to find out, for example, here I printed the V size PID arcs. I want only the size alone. The Show me the size uh, of the maximum memory utilization of any process. Yes, this will do. I think if I just type pipe uh, sort minus n and pipe tail minus one should do that there's a power of unix shell each command's doing different jobs you're assigning them in pipelines and solving something interesting right uh ps also has an option where you can list processes run by a particular user process run on a particular terminal for example if we just say ps minus <coughs> minus u and I'm just going to use the user account moon ranger let's see account i'm logged in as in here all of these are process run by a particular user called moon ranger i'm going to find out any process run by maybe root all of these are process run under root credentials so you can actually select process based on a user again when you select based on user i guess you can actually use minus o and uh, just print pid you can say minus o pid comma find out the memory utilization for example, I want to find out uh, memory utilization of a process of all the process run by a particular user. You can still say PS minus U and uh, my user account in this case and say minus O RSS. And uh, of course, I want to make sure that there's no headers being printed. So I'll say minus minus no header and use this switch. And as usual, I can just say pipe xrx pipe Z substitute space plus space globally. Oh, miss, miss, miss something. It looks like it. Okay. Substitute space to space plus space. All right. Yep. Maybe silly mistake. And yes. And then I can send it to. Yes. They'll do the trick. I hope you found this video useful. So do explore PS command and get comfortable with it because you will use them in all kinds of process monitoring automation very easily. I uh, hope you found this found this video useful. If you do find it useful, please do comment. So thank you all for now. So hope to meet you in future video sessions. Thank you.